Hello everyone uh, to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. Uh, we are in week six, a week uh, dedicated to the study of the harmonic model. And in this uh, particular uh, demo lecture, I want to demonstrate the use of that model uh, using a particular implementation, the one that we have in the SMS tools uh, package. And uh, we will be analyzing uh, simple harmonic sounds and then uh, trying to understand the parameters uh, to do a good analysis of those sounds and then synthesizing uh, those sounds so that we can uh, uh, see the, the potential and uh, the, the quality of the models that uh, we have uh, been developing. So let's go uh, directly to uh, the interface that uh, we have in the SMS tools uh, package uh, through which we can access all the models, which is this uh, models GUI uh, interface. And um, well, here we have the harmonic model uh, as one of the options, but let's start from the DFT and let's start by analyzing a simple sound, a sound of which we know the fundamental frequency and that is very uh, uh, clear, so this is a sawtooth uh, sound. Okay, so the, if, we, if we can listen uh, to this sound, okay, so this is an el electronically generated sound. And uh, now what we want to do is to just first look at a single uh, DFT so that then we can understand better the sound and decide what are the appropriate parameters for uh, analyzing uh, the harmonics of this sound. So the first uh, decision we have to make is what window do we use. Being uh, a simple sound, electronic sound, uh, sincerely the type of window is not that critical. So let's start with a simple uh, window, for example, let's start with a humming window. But now we have to choose the, the window size. Uh, and by default here it uh, says uh, 511, but how do we decide the best window size? And we went over that in uh, theory class. So the window size, um, which uh, also we call with the variable m, can be computed uh, by uh, multiplying the width of the main lobe of the humming window, which is 4, multiply by the sampling rate of the sound, which is 44,100, and divide it by the fundamental frequency that we have. And in this case, is a sawtooth at uh, 440 hertz, which is the uh, A for a uh, uh, note. So we divide by 440. And um, the result is basically 401 uh, samples. This would be uh, four periods of this uh, particular sound. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's put 401 samples as the window size. And in terms of the FFT um, size, uh, well, we want it to have bigger than the window size. Here uh, we can just do um, a big FFT size so that we have a lot of zero padding, we have a smooth spectrum. So let's put, for example, 2048. And um, we have to choose where are we going to perform this analysis. This is a one second uh, sound. So uh, here, point two, that sounds like a, a good point in which to choose these 401 samples. So let's compute. Okay. So this is the, the analysis results. Um, the input sound, uh, as uh, we, we chose, is four periods of uh, the sawtooth. Um, here is the spectrum uh, of the sawtooth, the magnitude and phase. Okay. And here we see the phases of uh, this particular uh, fragment. So, in fact, if we would zoom in into the phases, um, that uh, we can just do by, for example, zooming in at the very bottom of it so that we see better what's going on. We see that uh, at every single peak, at every single harmonic, uh, there is a pretty flat kind of uh, area, that uh, meaning that we have a very clear phase in every harmonic. Okay, so these peaks 
correspond to the harmonics and we have harmonics going from uh, 440 hertz up to uh, half of the sampling rate so in fact if we look at the at the shape of the of the sawtooth is not a, a perfect sawtooth in the sense that it doesn't have the uh, the, the smooth uh, sawtooth it has this uh, kind of uh, oscillation here and this is because we have a finite number of, uh, of sinusoids. It's not a, an infinite, it's not a, a continuous waveform, it's a discrete waveform and it has a, a limited uh, number of, uh, of sinusoids. Okay? And then if we do the inverse of that, we obtained um, the reconstructed waveform, but of course it's a reconstructed waveform with the window that we apply to it. So we applied the humming window, so this is a windowed uh, sawtooth waveform. Anyway, so this uh, works uh, quite well and uh, we can just uh, analyze uh, this uh, sawtooth with these parameters. So now if we go, for example, to the sine model uh, and we choose uh, the same uh, sound, so we choose the sawtooth, here we can uh, put the same value, so we can use uh, the humming, we can use the 401 uh, size window, um, we put the FFT size to 48. Here now we have to start putting some other parameters in order to decide what is going to be a peak or let's say uh, a partial of the sound. So the magnitude threshold we can put uh, here we see the threshold there's things uh, going pretty much down so we can just put for example minus 100 um, then we can decide the minimum duration of the sinusoids but this being an electronic a very stable sound this really doesn't matter that much number of sinusoids to track well we can just put uh, a big number we can just put for example 100 that should be fine um, and then we also can have a, a deviation uh, that we allow from one frame to the next in terms of, uh, of hertz uh, with respect to what would be the, the frequency zero and then this is a little bit scale as it goes up. This being a very stable electronic sound is really not an issue. The, the stability is going to be so high that uh, this uh, frequency deviation could be in fact very small. Uh, and therefore the slope of this deviation, so the change of this deviation as the frequency goes higher, also it can be very small, so that's not uh, an issue. So let's compute uh, with these uh, values. Okay, and uh, this is the result. Um, so here we have the, the original sound, the complete sound, now we are analyzing all the sound, and here is the the, the harmonics or the basically the sinusoids that it found and the reconstruction so here it's very much in fact the harmonics of the sound except at the very bottom in fact if we look here at the very bottom we see these lines that in fact they are not part of the harmonic series and why is that is that uh, it's in fact it's a uh, side lobes if we go back to the the dft here at the very low frequencies we see some side loads and this is what is catching the sinusoidal model at the very bottom. But let's do even, for example, uh, exaggerate this effect of the side loads. So instead of using the, the, the humming window, which has pretty low side loads below around 40 hertz, let's uh, use a humming window in which the side loads are higher, 30 something. So, and let's increase the window size. So, for example, let's put 600. Okay, so that we have a bigger window size, more periods to be analyzed. And basically, let's leave everything else the same. And now we compute. Okay, and okay, interestingly enough, we see a very different um, set of uh, sinusoidal tracks. We see many more. What are we seeing here? Well, we are seeing a lot of the side lobes of every single harmonic because the side lobes are quite high and therefore with a threshold of minus 100 uh, decibels and with a window size which is large enough so therefore there is space to, uh, to visualize the side lobes 
these uh, uh, appear in the in the uh, in the analysis. Even though if we play it, it sounds pretty good. It sounds uh, as if we are only resynthesizing the the, the the harmonics, and this is because, of course, they are part of the spectrum. So in terms of reconstruction. It's pretty good, even though from an analysis point of view, it's not so good because we are seeing basically the artifacts of uh, the analysis. Okay, now let's go to the harmonic model. And let's in fact start from kind of these wrong parameters. So parameters that uh, are not the best. So, in, so we start from the Hunting window and we do this uh, 600. Uh, window size uh, and we had this minus 100 threshold and in the harmonic model uh, an additional set of parameters that we have to specify relate to uh, the actual uh, fundamental frequency and the number of harmonics to be detected. So in terms of uh, number of harmonics in fact we can uh, we can know because given that the fundamental frequency is 440 uh, we can compute, in fact, the, the, the number of our maximum number of harmonics that they will be in the spectrum, which will be half of the sampling rate, 22050, divided by the fundamental frequency, by 440. So the 50 is, in fact, the maximum number of harmonics that will be present in uh, this sound. So we can specify uh, 50 harmonics. And then we have to specify a possible range of the fundamental frequency. So to help the two-way mismatch algorithm that is uh, being used here in, uh, in the detection of the fundamental frequency. So for example, I mean, we can be kind of uh, flexible. So we can put between 100 and uh, let's say um, 600. Uh, we know that it's 440, so we could be uh, more uh, more restrictive, but this would be just fine. And let's just compute it like uh, with these parameters. Okay, here, because we have the harmonic model, the result is quite different from the result that we obtained before, uh, in the sense that we now restricting we are restricting the uh, sinusoids to be harmonics of the fundamental that was found. And even though the window size was large, the number of peaks identified were uh, many more, and we also identified the side lobes, this uh, has uh, now uh, constrained the search for um, the harmonics, and uh, therefore we only see the harmonics. Of course, now we can go back to the ideal type of analysis value. So we, uh, let's go back to the humming window, for example, and let's go back to 400 um, uh, samples, and let's leave the rest the same, and we compute. And now, we, in fact, we will obtain the same thing. It's, uh, it's the same thing, but now the window size is smaller, which is sufficient. And if we play the original, and if we play the uh, reconstructed, it's identical. So uh, we basically have captured all the relevant information of these uh, sinusoidal um, 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 components uh, of the sound. OK, now let's go to um, uh, a more real sound, a more natural sound. So let's close all these uh, display windows. And let's uh, start again uh, from the DFT, but let's look at uh, a violin sound. So there is a violin sound here uh, in the sounds of the SMS tools, which is a violin uh, with the frequency B3. We can listen to that. Okay. So B3, the, the pitch that corresponds to the note B3, which is lower than the uh, um, A4 that we had before is uh, 200 and around 46 hertz. Okay, so in order to um, find the the, the best uh, window size, uh, we can compute uh, the, the. For example, if we start from the humming window, we need to compute four times 400, 
44,100 divided by the frequency, so 246. Okay, so this is a, a lower frequency, therefore four periods of the sound is uh, each larger, it's 717 samples. So we can put here 717. Okay, and we can leave the same FFT size, and in fact, the, well, we can, uh, the, this sound is a little bit longer, uh, so let's put 0.5 and as a place to be analyzed. And here is um, the result. Um, uh, this is a not an elect it's not an electronic uh, sound, so the, the number of, of, uh, of periods uh, now we, that we have chosen still uh, four, but is much more irregular than with the sawtooth. So in fact here it's even a little bit hard to see the, the period. In fact the period is like two bumps, you know? so th this would be one period would go from here to here, then another, then another, so it's again four periods of the violin uh, sound. The spectrum is a little more complex than the one again of the sawtooth, but we see clearly the harmonics. So if we zoom a little bit better into the, the part that we see as being relevant, we see uh, the first few uh, peaks and uh, these are clearly the harmonics of the sound, but we see uh, a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, energy or uh, spectral information that doesn't have these nice looking um, uh, sort of uh, peaks or, or shapes corresponding to the window. So in fact, instead of a humming window, might be better to take uh, a smoother window that kind of can discriminate better this kind of background uh, uh, residual or, or, or noise of this sound. So let's use the, the Blackman window and having this uh, is being uh, smoother we need more samples. So in fact we need six periods for this. Uh, the main lobe of the Blackman is uh, six bin wide so we uh, use the same equation to compute the window size but multiply by six. So now we need at least 1,075 samples. So let's put here 1,075 samples and let's compute the same way. And now we are seeing much better the, 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 the harmonics of the sound. So in fact, let's, uh, let's uh, compare it with the previous one and having zoom into the same area. So if we zoom into uh, that area that we had before, which was around uh, these, I guess. Now we are seeing better uh, the harmonics, and we see more harmonics of the sound going higher up, because the side lobes of the Blackman is, uh, are much lower, and therefore we uh, have been able to uh, reduce the artifacts of, uh, of the analysis window and therefore having uh, a smoother uh, representation. And we can afford it because uh, the violin sound is still quite stable, this is a note quite stable, so uh, if by taking a bigger part of the sound we still are capturing a stable part of, uh, of this sound. Okay, so uh, now let's go to the harmonic model and uh, let's uh, again get this uh, violin sound and let's apply the same values. So uh, let's apply the Blackman uh, window and uh, the, if we remember the, uh, the size that we put was 1,075, so one 75 and the FFT um, is uh, 2048 which is it's okay it's a, a good uh, zero padding the threshold the truth is that we don't need that much uh, threshold down we need more than in the in the sawtooth because as we can see here these uh, higher harmonics are quite a bit down from the first harmonic so let's uh, so minus 100 would be here, so let's just leave the minus 100. 
And then uh, in terms of the, the duration of the track, so this is a, this idea that if a, a track doesn't last enough, we're going to reject it. In terms of number of harmonics, also we can compute um, what would be uh, the possible maximum number of harmonics present in the violin. And this uh, we will just take the half of the sampling rate, 22050, and divide it by the fundamental frequency that uh, a B3 has, which is 246. So maximum, if there were harmonics all the way through half of the sampling rate, that would be 89 partials, um, 89 harmonics. So, well, let's put 89. And uh, then of the fundamental frequency, we have to help the algorithm again. So we know it's uh, 246, so we can just put between 200 and 300. That should be enough. And um, these other uh, parameters, again, this is a very simple sound. Uh, it's not as simple as the, the, the sodas, but it's still, so I do not think these parameters will matter that much. But So let's just compute it like this. Okay, so this is the um, analysis of the violin, and it looks uh, pretty good. Uh, we are seeing all the, the harmonics. Uh, as we go higher up, uh, there is uh, some harmonics that have some modulation. They are a little bit unstable. Um, but uh, let's listen again the, the input and output. So this is the input that we started from, and this is the output. It sounds pretty good. Uh, if you listen carefully, there may be some aspect, especially during the attack, that is not uh, quite there. So kind of a, this is a, let's say, a cleaner version of the original sound, or let's say uh, a smoother version, and maybe it's not as bright as the original sound, but uh, clearly the, the, the core uh, qualities of the sound are here, and we have been able to capture them. With this analysis, uh, we have been able to, to capture the essence of it, but we can start, in fact, playing around with it and, and doing things maybe that would not be the standard. So, for example, if in terms of the number of harmonics, we specify that we only want to analyze the first five, and uh, then we compute, well, the sound, the shape of the output doesn't look that different. But, uh, of course, in the analysis, we see uh, that there is only five harmonics. If we listen to the output, let's again listen first to the input. And the output, clearly we hear a low-pass version of the input. We are only uh, capturing the first few frequencies, the first five harmonics. So we have uh, lost all these uh, high uh, frequency components of the sound. Anyway, so that gives you an idea of uh, what the harmonic model does, and in fact, uh, what possibilities we have in playing around with the analysis parameters. Um, that's all I wanted to say. So basically, we went over um, the harmonic model from a practical point of view uh, using the SMS tools uh, package. And uh, we use uh, some sounds, uh, the sawtooth and the violin, uh, which are in free sound in, uh, in the pack that we use for this class. And they're also in the SMS tools uh, uh, distribution uh, uh, tools. Um, and uh, that's all. So this uh, was the second uh, demo class uh, for the harmonic model. We still have one more in, uh, in the next uh, demo class. We will actually analyze uh, more complex sounds. So sounds that actually vary in time, that are not just uh, single notes, but that uh, are actually uh, a melody, so that we have to worry a little bit more about how to analyze the harmonics and uh, how to set the parameters in order to capture the time-varying aspect of uh, a harmonic sound. So that was all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you uh, next class. Bye-bye.